welcome everybody who's here for the first time and, and those of you who are watching through church online. And of course, those of you who are every Sunday, let's put our hands together for all those groups. That includes all of us, right? And um, my name is Sebastian van Wessem. I'm the lead pastor here at Thousand Hills. And, uh, and you know, I have the privilege of kicking off this, uh, this brand new uh, series. And uh, I don't know about you, but how many of you were here last Wednesday? How many of you were here last? Just raise your hand if that was you. Uh, was it amazing? Deeper night. Was it amazing? That deeper night. Yeah? Man, if you weren't there, you really missed something. I mean, it was like revival in this house. Uh, God was moving in such a powerful way uh, beyond uh, what we've experienced so far. Uh, there were so many amazing moments of, um, of you know, God's spirit just moving, uh, mobilizing people for, for ministry, for doing great things in the world outside of, uh, outside of the, ch- the four walls of this church. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store for this next season uh, in this church. So if you were if you weren't there, make sure you watch the video, the full video. You can find it on the, on the Thousand Hills Facebook um, page, and it's still, uh, still right there, so you can watch everything. But man, God showed up in a powerful way, and um, I'm, I can't wait for, for what, what, what is to come here, uh, here in this church. But, but um, before, you know, uh, before I transition to, um, to our passage, just one thing. How many of you um, kind of get uh, annoyed when, you know, if you have kids, right? If you have kids, how many of you get annoyed when uh, your kids uh, don't want to say thank you for something you gave them or something that somebody else gave to them? How many of you get annoyed at that? Am, and, am I the only one not... The only one, okay. Some of you are still kids, and just a reminder for you to say thank you for the things that your parents or other people give uh, to you. It's 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 a it's a good thing to say thank you for uh, what people do in your life, but also for what God does in your life, because there's so many things that God does in our lives. And in fact, there's this amazing passage uh, scripture in uh, Psalm 100, verse four. It says this: "Enter His gates with thanksgiving; go into His courts with praise." Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Basically, through thanksgiving, we, we kind of enter um, into the premises of the Lord. We, we, we kind of get on his territory. And, and so it's important. So there's, there's, something, there's something supernatural about praising the Lord. It's so much more than just singing a few, few songs on Sunday morning. You know, praising the Lord actually opens some doors that you thought would never open in your life. And so it will get us onto the premises of the Lord when we praise him. And uh, in this new series, uh, Summer Psalms, we'll be looking at, um, at, a, at six psalms. And, and those psalms, 113 through 118, they're called the uh, Hallel Psalms. The Hallel Psalms. Everybody say Hallel. It's not Hallel, it's Hallel. Okay? So Hallel means, it's a Hebrew word, and it means actually to praise. To praise is derived from the word halu. And, and what other word comes from that, that word? It's the word hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. That's, that basically means praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, um, so that's what these songs are about. They're songs of praise. And every psalm uh, in that, 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 that series of six psalms, they give different reasons why we should praise the Lord. And, and our, our prayer for you during these coming few weeks is that we will be able to worship the Lord at a deeper level, to experience more of his presence as we, as we learn from his word and as we put this into practice. That's my prayer for, for all of us as we, as we get into this series. And, you know, these six psalms, they were sung during the Passover celebration, during the Passover meal, uh, the Seder meal. And if you were here for Good Friday, uh, you know that we kind of did the main elements of the Seder meal. But it's basically a celebration of, um, of the Israelites leaving their, um, their slavery in Egypt and going to the promised land. And uh, so, so the Psalms basically start out with the slavery that they experience in, in Egypt. And then they end up in, in God's house, in the temple in, in Jerusalem, the place where God dwells. And that is really, it's not only a picture of, our, um, of, our, um, of the journey of the Israelites from one place to another place. It's also a, a spiritual journey that, that you and I can embark on, away from our spiritual slavery to sin into um, the promised land, into the temple of the Lord. And the temple of the Lord, of course, is the place where God dwells, where we get to experience his presence. And I believe that this is not something for just a holy bunch of people, uh, like a small bunch of holy people here in the church. It's, it's for everyone. God wants us 
to live close to him. God wants us to draw near to him. God wants us to experience him in a way that we've never experienced before, him before. And that's my desire for you to, to, to get that during this, during this series. So, um, so I want to I want to I want to get into get into the word with you and start out with Psalm 113 verse 1 and then kind of go verse by verse through this passage. But let's let's pray first and allow the Lord to speak to us through this. God, we want to come to you, Lord, right now. We want to thank you for your presence in this place, God. And Lord, there's a, there's something supernatural that goes on in our lives when we when we learn to praise you with everything that we've got. There's something supernatural that you want to do in the lives of every person right here. And Father, we just pray, Lord, that as we go into this series, that, that the breakthroughs that we've been longing for, that we would receive them, God. And Father, help us, Lord, to praise right through our problems, Lord, through this series. And God, we, we ask you, Lord, to bless this series and give us a better, clearer picture of who Jesus is, Lord, through all of this. That his name may be glorified, that his name may be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. All right, so let's, uh, let's get to that verse, first verse, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It's like, some kind of sounds repetitive, right, when you read this, when you listen to this. It's like, pray, the word praise is repeated three times. Why would the psalmist, the, the one who wrote this psalm, Repeat that one word three times. Why would he repeat that Hebrew word halu, which is used here? Why would he repeat that three times? Well, there's something special about those ancient languages like Hebrew. That is that if some, something is really important, what the writer would do is he would repeat something three times. So apparently, learning to praise the Lord is something that is crucial for our lives today. So we need to learn how to praise the Lord, because you know what happens when we don't praise the Lord, when we don't praise the Lord ourselves and don't find time beyond the Sunday morning to praise him, but also do it like during the week when we're driving our cars, when we are at home, you know, I encourage you to play worship music instead of secular music, because what does worship, worship music do? It lifts your focus on Jesus. It gives you a new perspective. So instead of listening to all that junk that's out there on, on secular radio that kind of pulls you down, it pulls you up. And, and, and you know what? If we don't learn to praise the Lord individually, what will happen is that our hearts will automatically grow cold towards, towards God. If we don't have that habitual time of, of prayer and, and worship for ourselves, then we're going to lose out on that. And that is why coming to church on a Sunday is so important because we get to, to encourage one another to praise the Lord. We get to um, fire each other up, you know, and we get to sing songs like, you know, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I mean, that's my prayer for all of you today, that we would experience the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we worship Him. Actually, that's one of the pictures that God gave me during our prayer time at 8 o'clock this morning. You think 8 o'clock is super early. It is super early, but it's rewarding to be there, to experience God's presence in a powerful way that early in the morning. And I had this picture of, of basically of Acts chapter 2 where the disciples, Jesus' followers, they were together in that upper room. And, and the fire of the Holy Spirit came down on each and every one of them. Tongues of fire, the passage says, came down on each of them. And I believe that that each of them is very important part of the story here. Because I believe that God wants all of us individually to have that experience with the Holy Spirit. That we get to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That tongues of fire will set, set, set themselves on each and every one of us. Because we all need that experience. We all need to experience more of the Holy Spirit. We all need to experience more of his fire in our lives. In order to, to, to lift ourselves up. And that's why church is so important. Because we get to do this as a family. That's one of the things that, that I think was so clear on Wednesday. You know, how important it is to be part of a spiritual family. Where we get to do this together. Where we get to fire each other up. And experience more of him in our lives. Now who are the ones who are supposed to praise the Lord? This verse 1 says that it's the servants of the Lord that are supposed to praise the Lord. Now, who are the servants of the Lord? You know, the word in Hebrew for, for worshiping is basically the same word that's being used for serving. So worshiping the Lord is serving the Lord. So, so everybody who has a relationship with the Lord is a servant of the Lord. Everyone who, who is a worshiper of the Lord is a servant of the Lord. But you know what? The, 
the revelation that we get from the New Testament is that we're so much more than just servants of the Lord. We're also children of God. We're sons and daughters of the Lord. So we're not only servants, we're sons and daughters. We're children of, of God. And, and because we're, we're servants, there is, there is so much reason to praise him. Because we're children of God, there's so much reason for us to praise him uh, because of what he has done in our lives. And, and you know what? Not only because we're, we're, we're children and we're servants of the Lord, we're worshipers of God, but also we, we know that there's an eternal reward that, that, that when we made the decision to follow Jesus and we start to serve other people and bring Jesus closer to them, that there's an eternal reward waiting, waiting for us in heaven. There's a reward waiting for us. We're servants. I love this verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God. Now maybe you don't know the context of this story, but you know the Israelites... They thought that God was their own special possession, that they're the only ones who, who could have a relationship with God. But, but, but Peter here says that, hey, uh, those who are Gentiles, those who are not from, the Jew, from a Jewish background, who are not from an Israelite background, that means most of us here as non-Jews, we, we suddenly from not being a people, we now become the people of God. We now become sons and daughters of God. And we, we can show his light in a dark place. We're sons and daughters and servants, not of sin or Satan, nor of men, but we're servants of the Lord. And because of that, we praise him. We give him all the praise. Now, who is supposed, well, sorry, what is supposed to be praised? The next verse answers that. It says this, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why would you praise or bless the name of the Lord instead of the Lord himself. Actually, the one is the other. And the name of the Lord has to do with the revelation of who God is. And theologian Boyce says this, if it is not just any God we are to worship, we are to praise the one true Lord who has revealed himself in creation on Sinai and more recently in the person of his only son, Jesus of Nazareth. The name of someone, the name of a king, or the name of God, it carries with it the idea of power and responsibility and purpose and authority. You know, a, an ambassador, he comes to you in the name of the head of state of that country. An ambassador of the Netherlands in some other country in the world comes to you in the name of the king of the Netherlands, the head of state of the Netherlands. And we come into this world as ambassadors in the name of our God. That, that name of God is so important, the name of God. And so, so in the Old Testament, the name of the Lord, the name of God is basically God himself, but the name that was being used as being used very often in the Old Testament is the, is the name Yahweh. Uh, and it means I am who I am. But you know what? God has revealed to us another name in the New Testament, the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. That is a name that has been given to us under earth. And, and you know what? When we pray in his name, we pray in his authority. When we pray in his name, we pray with his power. And we are representatives of him. We're ambassadors of, of Jesus, the son of God. It says this, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. In other words, when you see Jesus, you see God. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says something similar. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. It's like when we look at Jesus, we see God. And that is why we are so blessed in this day and age that we have the Bible, that we have the New Testament, that we have four Gospels, four different versions of the story of Jesus Christ. When he walked on this earth and we see how he walked, we see how he acted, we see how he did miracles, we see all these things in the Bible and we get to learn from it. It's amazing. 
And we get to see who God is through, through looking at the Gospels. And not only that, I love how Paul, the Apostle Paul, just kind of talks about the being of Jesus, who he really is. That by looking at him, we see God. Prayer of blessed people. We praise the name of Jesus. I love, that, I love that, that song, that old song. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. How many of you remember the words from that old song about 30 years ago? Love that. It's based on Proverbs 18, verse 10. We praise the name of Jesus because that is a name given under heaven by which we may be saved. That is a name above all names, the name that will set things in motion in this world, the name of Jesus. The next question about the text is found in, the answer to that is found in Psalm 113, verse 2 and 3. And it answers the question, when and where are we supposed to praise? Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name, again, the Lord's name is to be praised. We're called to praise God always and everywhere. Always and everywhere. Even at your workplace. Maybe you want to turn the volume down a little bit. But we're called to praise the Lord, you know. We're called to kind of live lives of worship wherever we go in our lives. You know, Paul says this in Ephesians 5, verse 18 through 20. Do not get drunk on wine. Some of you maybe have something to repent of from last night. Which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And I love this. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always giving thanks. Everybody say always. Always, always giving thanks. We always give thanks to the Lord. For The psalm said this, from this time forth and forevermore. In other words, from generation to generation, we get to praise the Lord. And everywhere, from the rising of the sun to its going down, that means, means from east to west. That means on the whole globe, wherever we go, wherever we live our lives. Whatever situation we go through, we praise the Lord. Love this old song. By Hillsong, Hillsong was 2008. It's actually not that old, but 10 years old. It's, it's old for worship songs we sometimes sing here, right? But it's a great song. And it says this, it's a desert song, it's called. All of my life, in every season, you are still God. I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to worship. Even when life is hard, and, and some of you, have gone through situations in your life and life is hard and you know what, it, what, I'm, what I'm talking about right here. Life is hard and it feels like we get into a spiritual desert and the best thing we can do when we get into a spiritual desert is instead of worrying, we start worshiping. We worship instead of worry. I don't know about you, but, but you know, when I go through tough situations in my life, my tendency is, is to worry instead of worship. I'm a human too, right? How many of you are human here in this place? We're all human. No robots. We all have the same tendency, but, and that's why the church is so important. Because we're a family together. And when you see that other person sitting next to you, that brother or sister, if I can call it like that, because when we're family, we're brothers and sisters. Let's go back to the old terms, right? And you see them worry. You say, hey, I notice that you're worrying about this in this situation, but don't you realize that God is bigger than that? Amen. Focus your eyes on Jesus. We lift each other up. We lift each other up. We help each other focus on Jesus in the middle of our situation, in the middle of our, our worries, in the middle of our desert periods in our life. And when we do it, when we focus our eyes on him, peace will flood our lives. Last question, four answers to it. So don't, don't, don't think I'm ready in the next one minute, okay? I'm almost done though. Why are we supposed to praise? Why are we supposed to praise? I wanna give you four reasons. So write these down, these are crucial. Verse three and four. 
from the rising of the sun to its going down. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. We're praise. We're supposed to praise the Lord because of his glory. Because of his glory. The message version renders it like this. God is higher than anything and anyone. Outshining everything you can see in the skies. He's higher than anything and anyone. Wow. So many times we limit God because of our experiences. When we see verses like this, it's like, well, yeah, I know God is great, but I went through this tough season in my life and I didn't experience him that way, so it must be that God is not all-powerful. No, God is. He is higher than everything, higher than everything. His glory is higher than the highest heaven. We need to praise him because of his glory. We praise him because of his glory. Second reason to praise him is that because there's no one like him. No one is like him. Verse 5 says this, Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on high? Message version says this, Who can compare with God our God? So majestically enthroned, surveying his magnificent heavens and earth. Who can compare with God our God so majestically enthroned? God is majestically enthroned. No one can compare to him. Our God is incomparable. You know, whatever, whatever God you may think of, whatever uh, powerful ruler in this earth you may think of, God is incomparable to any of those. He's way higher, he's way stronger, he's way, way bigger than all of those. God is amazing. He's incomparable. Incomparable. And then because he humbled himself, the third reason. Verse 6, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. When we understand the greatness of God, then his interest and care for creation, and especially us as humans, right, is remarkable. It's like, you know, you got those, that, that amazing big God who made the heavens and the earth, who made the universe, all the galaxies. He made all of those. Yet he cares for a human like you and me. You know, there's billions and billions of people in this world walking around this earth, and he cares about each and every one of them. David said this, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? David was like, Wondering, I mean, how can this huge, amazing, big God care about me? How can this amazing God care about all of us here in this room and every person outside of the walls of this church who still don't, doesn't know Jesus? He cares about every one of us. We can only fully grasp how high God is exalted when we understand how low he humbled himself. God is all up in the heavens, but he came down to earth. He came down to this world to behold the things that are going on on the world. And the Apostle Paul gives another take on that. He, he, he kind of makes a parallel between that verse in, in Psalm 113 and, and what Jesus has done for us. And Philippians 2 says this, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. In other words, you know, God is, uh, Jesus is divine. He has all this glory up in heaven. But he felt like, hey, I need to be willing to kind of lay this aside for a season and go to the world. And then the verse continues. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. And because Jesus was willing to humble himself to the lowest point, God lifted him up to the highest place, to the highest place of honor. Now why could Jesus give up his divine rights, his divine privilege. Why was he able to kind of go all the way down to earth and to walk around as a human being like you and me? Of course, he's the son of God. He still was when he walked around on the earth, but he's also a human. Why could he do this? Because Jesus didn't have a identity crisis. 
Jesus was secure in who he, who he was and who he is. You know, God doesn't need your praise as a reminder that he is God. You need to praise him as a reminder that he is God and you are not. Let me repeat that, because I hope you heard it. God doesn't need your praise as a reminder that He is God. You need to praise Him as a reminder that He is God and you are not. Come on, let's give it up to the Lord for that. <laughs> praise Him because He humbled Himself. Fourth reason, because He's concerned with those in need. Verse 7 says this, he raises the poor out of the dust and he lifts the needy out of the ash heap. You know, when God in heaven beholds the things on earth, he, he sees the poor down in the dust and the needy and the ash heap. And what does he do? He raises them up. He raises them up. I believe that that's why God is so much concerned about the poor and needy around the world. But you know what? When Jesus sang this song at Last Supper, he was singing this song, right? He was singing those words. And it must have occurred to him that, that this psalm was also speaking about him. That, that you know, that, that he would be the one who would be lifted from the dust of the grave and exalted to the highest place. He knew that this psalm was speaking about him as well. Not just about the poor living on this, this planet, but about himself as well. That he was, had to lay down his life, but that God would raise him up again. And it says in verse 8, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. Jesus was exalted to the highest place. He was exalted to the highest place and he exalts us with him. It's like he has this position up in heaven right now and he shares that position with you and me. You know what, friends? You know, when we die, we get to go to heaven when Jesus is our Lord and Savior, right? But you know what? We can experience heaven in our lives today. We are, the Bible calls us citizens of heaven at this moment in our lives. Ephesians 2 verse 5 and 6, even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Only because of what he has done for you can you be saved. Not because of what do we do for him. For he raises up from the dead along with Christ and he seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Amazing that we are seated in heavenly places. We get to experience heaven when we are serving the Lord, when Jesus is our number one, when he's our Lord and Savior, we, we get to experience heaven today in our lives. And then the psalmist closes with these words. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know how you came in here this morning. I don't know how you're watching this through church online, but I don't know if you have a spiritual family, if you have a natural family or not. You might, be, you might feel lonely. But God places you in a spiritual family. God doesn't want you to live life by yourself. You'll never walk alone. And, and, and that's the offer that we have for you, you know. This, this, this church is so much more than, than just a worship service of one hour and 15 minutes on a Sunday morning. This church is family. For those who have natural families and for those who don't have natural families, we get to do life together. We get to build each other up. We get to encourage one another. Every time when we get together on a Sunday morning, when we get together in a small group, when we serve together on one of our teams, we get to build each other up. We get to be family together. God places you in a spiritual family. We'll never walk alone. So get plugged into a family like this because God is concerned with those in need. Praise God because he is concerned with you. Praise God for that. You know, we can praise the Lord for all the good things that he does in the lives of others who are in need. And it's great to watch it when, when we see somebody walking through a tough season in their lives and then we see how God kind of intervenes in the midst of that. But when we get this experience firsthand, that when we go through a rough time in our own lives and 
we experience that God is showing up in our lives, it's even more amazing. We get to praise God through the rocky season that we go through ourselves. It can be first-hand experience when we go through a rough time. And you know what? I think it's so important that we, we learn to do that. And again, like I said, you know, that's what, fam what family is for, right? When we go, when we don't see it for a moment, when we feel like we're down, that there's this other person that says to you, hey, come on, look to Jesus. Come on, there is hope. Put this into eternal perspective, you know. There's so much more that God has for your life. And he's right here for you. He wants to do a miracle in your life. He wants to um, give you a new vantage point and look at your situation from a, in a whole new way. And it's important that we go back to Scripture, that we go back and, and to, to, ver, to Psalms like this and, and experience the full meaning for our own lives. And you know what? I, I just want to, what I want to do, what I felt led to do this morning is that, that we get to proclaim some of the words, some of the meaning of this Psalm over our own lives and over the lives of other people. I said, okay, can we just, I'm going to read yeah, like, like, a, like a sentence and then you'll repeat it. So you proclaim it over your own life. And I know this is going to make a difference for you because, you know, there's something about speaking the word. There's something about speaking it up. Because when it's just a thought that kind of enters into our mind and we don't do anything with it, it kind of fades away. But when we get to speak it, when we get to speak it over our own lives, we get to grasp it. So I want to read, read this out loud and then there are some proclamations. And I want you to repeat it after me. My God will raise me up out of the dust. My God will lift me up out of the ash heap. My God will seat me among royalty. My God will place me in a spiritual family. Those are things that we, we need to lay hold of for our own lives. And, and you know what? We, we got to learn to praise the Lord in, in difficult circumstances. I had to think of the story of, of, of Paul and Silas in, in a city called Philippi. And this is almost 2,000 years ago. And they were doing the right thing. And you know, sometimes we think when we do the right thing that, 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 that our life will only be easy when that happens, when we do that. But you know what? They didn't have an easy life. Because, be, because they were doing the right thing, they were thrown in jail. And, and jail back in those days wasn't like our four-star Belmar Bayes. It was a little bit of a different experience. It's like um, humid, smelly. There's no bathroom or anything like it, so you can imagine how it smelled like. I don't know if you like rats, but there's lots of pets in that little dungeon right there. And Paul and Silas, they were, they were put in the innermost jail, their feet and their hands in, in chains, doors securely locked in the innermost jail. Their, their backs were beaten open by all the floggings that they had received during the day because they hated him for, for preaching the truth. And you know what? You would expect that when that happens that they would curse God or get angry or complain or anything like it. I mean, those are probably some of the things that would come into my heart when, when I would be in a situation like that, but not with them. It says that at the midnight hour, the darkest moment that they started to sing the praises to God. They started to sing psalms. They started to sing hymns to God in the midst of that, the darkness that they were experiencing. And as they were worshiping the Lord, suddenly, one by one, all those chains started to fall off. Suddenly, all the prison doors were open. And not only that, also the, the chains of all the other prisoners were falling off. Why? Because of an earthquake. What a coincidence, an earthquake. This was a spiritual earthquake, friends. And you know what? The key is here that when we go through rough seasons in our lives, the best thing we can do is we praise the Lord. We praise right through our problems. And when we do it, the doors will open. Prison, the chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. And I don't know what you're going through in life today, but the word that God wants to give you today is praise right through your problems. Praise right through your problems. And God's going to work a miracle for you. 
God is going to do something above and beyond you've ever expected. You know, this is a new season that we're getting into. This is a new time we, we're getting into as a church and as individuals. And, and, and I believe that God wants us to learn the power of praise and worship in our lives. God wants us to learn the, the, what the power of praise and worship is in this church when we gather together on a Sunday morning. And my challenge to you today is that when you walk into church on a Sunday morning, that it will be so much more than just a religious duty. That it will just be so much more than tradition that you go to church every Sunday morning, 1130, and you're like, oh yeah, whatever. No, praise the Lord with everything that is within you. Because when you do, those chains will fall off. Not of yourself only, but also of your friends and your neighbors and your family members who are still chain smoking and uh, on drugs and alcohol or other situations that they go through. Maybe pornography and those chains will fall off of them when you praise right through it. There's freedom for you. There's freedom for them. And God is calling you and I to praise him with everything in us. I want to take a moment to, to set this thing up for, I believe God has something special in store for us today. And for some of us, it is a decision. The most important decision that we can make today is to be reconciled with God. Now that sounds like difficult language. It's pretty easy actually. It's being reconciled with God. Is, there's only one way to be reconciled with God and that's through Jesus accepting what he has done on the cross for you so that you could be forgiven of your sin. And that because he rose again on the third day that you can have life, eternal life, an abundant life. And that's, that's the first altar call I'm going to give and we're just going to do that in our seats. But then there's another thing that I want to invite you into. I don't know what your situation is that you're going through at the moment. But I want to take a moment after that salvation call that, that you can actually bring those burdens that you're carrying with you, the situations maybe in your family, in your marriage, in your workplace, your, your health, your finances, whatever it is, that you could actually encounter God in a, in a very real way. And we'll, we'll open up the altars in, in just a few moments where, you know, and I believe that when we, when we respond to that, that and the Bible says, when we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Sometimes it takes a step for us to experience everything that he has for us. And there's something about touch. There's something about laying on of hands. The Bible speaks about it. And I'm going to teach about this in the, in the fall, the laying on of hands and the importance of that. There's something supernatural that takes place when we, when we do it. So we have a prayer team that is available for you that when you come forward, it will lay their hands on you. And I believe that as they do it, and they speak words of life over your life, that those chains will be broken over your life, that you get to have a new vantage point, a new perspective, something new is going to take place in your life. But before we get into that, let's, let's all stand up right now. Let's all get into a posture of worship. Let's all take a, take a brief moment to kind of think about where our life is with Jesus. Our, do we live a life that's fully surrendered to him? Is Jesus our number one? Is he our Lord? Is he our Savior? Have we accepted what he has done on the cross for our lives? Because only by his grace you have been saved. It's one of the scriptures that we read. Only because of what he has done can you have eternal life. Only because of we, what he has done can you be forgiven of your sin. And I want to I give you an opportunity that if that's you, if you want to be reconciled with God, if you want to make sure that there's no no wall between you and God anymore. If you want to be restored in your relationship with God and God, there's nothing more that God wants for you than, than to be restored and than to have that relationship restored. And that's why he sent his son Jesus to this world. That's why he gave up the best thing he had, his only son for you. So let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads right now. Let's think about it. Where is our life with him? Have we accepted him as our Lord and Savior? Are we walking far from him at the moment? Is he a million miles away from us? Or maybe we're, we've turned our back on him. I know some of you here today have that. But God is asking you to come back to him. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. 
and a way how you can draw near to God in this, in this coming moment to accept Jesus and to be forgiven of your sins and to receive that eternal life with our heads bowed and our eyes closed is by just raising, raising your hand as I count to three so that I can pray with you and lead you in a prayer where your relationship with him will be restored. So as I count to three, just, just raise your hand to him and, and we'll pray together. One, two, three. If that's you, just raise your hand. I see a hand right there. I see one more back there. Thank you. I see two more right there. I see one more right there. I know there's some more people here in the middle section that need to make the decision. I can't fully see it, but it's okay. Let's, let's just pray. To, but maybe we can pray out loud together, okay? Jesus, I thank you that you came to this world to die for my sins so that I could be forgiven. And that you rose again on the third day so that I may have life, abundant life, and eternal life. Today, I turn from my sins. Today, I turn from my self-centered life. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. And I want to turn to you, Jesus. I want to make you the number one of my life. I want to make you the Lord and Savior of my life. From now on, I want to follow you for the rest of my days. God, I thank you for everything that you have for me, for the amazing plan that's going to unfold in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together for those who responded. <laughs>